Hello world and welcome to the video presentation to the paper to interact or not the benefits of interacting particles. In this paper, our objective is to minimize some function f of x with x lying in a constraint set curly x. And the way we do this is using an algorithm called mirror descent. In continuous time, mirror descent is given as follows, where our variable z is updated using the gradient of f, and z is then projected back into our constraint set using the mirror map phi. Now, if our gradient estimate contains noise, as is common if it's computed over a batch uh, of the data, then we have stochastic mirror descent with additionally this noise term sigma times a Brownian motion. The challenge here is that stochastic mirror descent is only able to converge to an area of the optimum x star, and the size of this area is proportional to the noise variance. So to mitigate this, various techniques have been proposed, such as increasing the batch size, decreasing the learning rate, or importance sampling. And in this paper, we propose to take a different approach. Instead of just running one instance of the algorithm, we propose to run n instances of the algorithm. And each of these instances, which we refer to as particles, we allow them to interact. The interaction is done through the matrix A, with Aij being 1 if two particles are interacting or, in other words, exchanging their values. And the parameter theta is controlling the interaction strength. Why is this useful? Why are interactions useful? Well, we can actually converge closer to the optimum if we impose a sufficiently high interaction strength. As you see from this uh, equation, our noise variance sigma squared is reduced by a factor of n. So having more particles allows us to con converge closer to the optimum. Let's look at some numerical examples. First of all, an ill-conditioned problem. What we see here is that if we run 1, 10 or 100 uh, particles, we are actually able to converge way closer to the optimum using more particles, so as expected from our theoretical results. And also the spread of the particles is smaller when we use more interacting particles. If we then look at non-convex optimization, their interaction actually results in two interesting things. So first of all, if we look at the Muller-Brown potential and starts from a saddle point and we consider no noise and no interaction, then our algorithm remains stuck in the saddle point. But actually then increasing the interaction strength adds a certain amount of instability to our algorithm, allowing us to escape from this saddle point into a local minimum. If we then consider stochastic uh, gradient descent, and again starting out from this saddle point, what we see is that due to the noise, the particles converge into different local minima. However, imposing a sufficiently high interaction strength makes sure that we can control that the particles all converge to the same value, something that's obviously of value in distributed optimization, where um, we want each of the nodes to converge to the same value. So this was a very brief overview. If you're interested in more theoretical or numerical results, um, our paper is on archive. Thank you.